Have you ever heard someone say, I'm not going to worry about that, and wondered, how are they going to do that? Maybe you felt a little jealous, as if they had some kind of superpower that you didn't that allowed them to shut off their mind. You don't need to shut off your mind to stop worrying. You simply need to be intentional about how you use your mental energy. This episode is about how to stop worrying. I'm going to share seven strategies to help you stop worrying. You're listening to Pure Light, where we explore how to become the highest version of yourself so that you feel worthy of your craziest dreams and confident in your power to make them happen. My name is Ailey. I'm a coach, writer, and a kundalini yoga and meditation teacher. This is episode 65. So one of the things that I've been thinking about lately is what are the things that result in getting stuck in your head? Negative thinking spirals are one thing that can do that, that I talked about in the last couple of episodes. And worry is another one. It's a big one. Worrying about the future, worrying about what happened in the past. It's something that can take up a lot of mental energy and prevent us from being fully present with what's happening around us. So in this episode, I'm going to share seven strategies to help you stop worrying. But before I do that, I want to talk about something that has been on my mind lately, or at least was until I realized I could stop worrying about it. So I've been working on a book. And just as a side note, I recently realized that I need to write some other stuff first. Um, But that's like a whole other thing that maybe I'll talk about some other time. Uh, But with the original book, one of the challenges for me was that I was worried about whether or not I would be able to remember everything that I wanted to put in it. So all of the stories and all of the ideas. And a couple of weeks ago, I was at a writing workshop with Joyce Maynard, who is a writer. She's written, I think, 17 books. And the workshop was focused on memoir writing. And the book that I was originally working on was not a memoir, but I still thought the workshop would be useful because I've watched her online courses and I thought they were great. And one of the questions that came up in the workshop, and this was also in at least one of the online courses, was what if I don't remember the details of the story? And Joyce's answer to that was, you know, so you may not necessarily remember details that don't matter, like the color of the dress or, um, you know, something that's very specific but you know what happened and you know what it felt like. So you know what that experience was like for you. And so that's the thing to focus on in the writing because that is where the truth comes out. And that was a really powerful answer for me because I realized that I I could either keep worrying about the details and things that are not really going to impact the story that, you know, in the bigger scheme of things don't really matter. Or I could just trust that it's all in me and what I really need to do is just create the space and time to write it and, and to allow it to come out. So there's a new level of peace that I have when it comes to writing. And there's also a new level of trust that everything's going to be okay. So that's one example of how a shift in perspective can help you stop worrying. And if you've been worrying about something, here are seven strategies that you can use to help you stop worrying. So the first one is to see it as a positive thing when you catch yourself worrying. So this is probably the most important thing, because if you catch yourself worrying and you're trying to stop, it may be really easy to get angry or disappointed with yourself if you're still doing it. So instead of looking at it as a bad thing when you catch yourself worrying, look at it as a positive thing, because now you're aware of the fact that you're doing it. And you have the opportunity to refocus. You're no longer doing it unconsciously. So you're aware of the fact that you're worrying. And you're choosing to do something about it. And we'll talk a little bit more about what some of those choices might be. But one thing uh, that you might choose to do is, and this is the second strategy, to actually do something about the thing you're worried about. Meaning take some kind of action. So you may have seen those infographics that start with a question, you know, do you need to worry? And then the next question is, can you do something about it? So if the answer is yes to the question, can you do something about it? If there's something that you can do that you are not doing, do that thing 
because it'll help your mind calm down because you're moving towards the thing that you don't or you're moving towards the thing that you want or away from the thing that you don't want. So for example, if you're worried about your finances and you've been letting bank statements accumulate without looking at them, set aside some time to take a look at them. So it may not necessarily feel good to look at them and you may not like what you see, but you'll know what you're dealing with. So instead of leaving yourself in the uncertainty of not knowing and then having all of the worry and stress that comes along with that, you'll have facts to empower you to make decisions and take actions to deal with it. Because worry often comes from uncertainty and uncertainty comes from not knowing. So if you know what you're dealing with, it'll take away a level of worry. Okay, so the third strategy is to decide to stop worrying. So after noticing that you're worrying and then doing whatever you can, this is really the first step in a way, because this is where you start being intentional about how you want to spend your mental energy. So don't worry yet about how you're going to do this. Just decide that this is what you want. So set that intention that this is the direction that you want to go, the direction of having less worry, even if you don't know how you'll get there. So the next strategy, the fourth strategy, is to trust. So trust that everything will be okay, that you'll have what you need, and that the the universe will support you. So in a previous episode called The End of Worry, I talked about how worry ends where trust begins. That was episode 18 if you want to go back and have a listen. So when you catch yourself worrying, ask yourself, If I were to trust that everything is okay, and it will be okay, can I let this go? Is it worth spending my mental energy on this? And then the fifth strategy is to breathe. So in another episode, I think it was episode 12, I talked about how worry could be a sign that you're manipulating the breath without even realizing it. So in yogic philosophy, the mind and body are connected by the breath. So if there's a disconnection there, and a lot of your energy and attention are captured by worry, it means that you've gotten caught up in your head. So taking a deep breath or a few deep breaths will help you come back to a more balanced state where you're present in your body instead of being caught up in the worry and everything that's going on in your mind. The sixth strategy is to shift your focus. So refocus your attention and intentionally choose where you want to direct your mental energy. When you worry, you're focusing on the problems or obstacles or challenges or what could possibly go wrong. So you can either continue going down that path, which could easily spiral out of control, or you could choose to take a different path. So remind yourself of your intention to stop worrying and shift your focus to what's going well, what has gone well, and what could go well. So instead of ruminating on the problems, focus on the possibilities. And then the seventh strategy to help you stop worrying is to use that energy for something else. So all of that mental energy that you're putting into worrying can be used for a different purpose. And It may be hard to shift your focus, but one thing that can really help is to do something that'll totally absorb your attention because that'll take your mind off of the thing that you're worrying about. So you want to do something where you're totally in the moment and loving it. So really enjoying that experience so that you have no space in your mind to keep worrying because you only have so much mental space to focus on stuff. So if you're focusing on something that totally absorbs your attention, you'll naturally stop worrying. And doing something creative is a great option because doing creative work usually start with some kind of a blank canvas and then you have to make decisions about what to do with that. So, you know, do you draw a line? Do you draw a circle? Do you use the blue crayon? Do you use the the yellow marker? Whatever that is, it keeps your mind engaged because you're constantly making decisions. And even if you don't think you're a creative person, grab some crayons, grab a pencil, grab whatever materials you have, 
and a sheet of paper and start drawing something because that will help get your mind off of whatever you're worried about. So the next time you catch yourself worrying, ask yourself, do I really need to worry about this? See it as a positive thing that you've noticed that you're worrying because now you can do something about it. Be kind to yourself instead of getting frustrated. If there's something that you can do about the thing that you're worried about, take that action. And if doing it right now is not an option, set aside some time to do that so that you can stop worrying and wondering about how and when you'll make that happen. And once you've done that, set the intention to stop worrying. Trust that everything will be okay. Take a few deep breaths. Instead of focusing on the problems and challenges, focus on the positives and the possibilities. And finally, do something creative. Do something that fully absorbs your attention. Because that's another way that you can choose to focus your mental energy on something else. So I've mentioned a couple of different episodes here, and I'll put links to all of those in the show notes. You can find them at purelightpodcast.com under episode 65. For more perspectives to help you see everything in a new light, Subscribe to Pure Light wherever you listen to podcasts to get new episodes every week. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, may you be guided by your light.